North Carolina natives, tribes of the Piedmont region. Native Americans that settled in North Carolina had special qualities that helped them survive and do well in the different areas of the state. They were strong people who believed in protecting their land, tribe, and family. They also felt strongly about protecting their resources in order to continue living in the area. After European explorers discovered the New World, everything changed. Colonists, or white people, were sent to settle this new land. Both Native Americans and colonists found themselves in an uncomfortable situation. Each came from a very different culture, and it did not take long for them to realize that they would be unable to live together. Early natives of the Piedmont region were not violent people. However, they were known to get into arguments with each other. This sometimes led them to go on what they called a warpath. A warpath was the route taken by a party of American Indians going on a large war trip. The Tuscarora, Waxhaw, and Catawba Indians were the largest tribes of the Piedmont region. They rarely fought unless a disagreement about land was involved. The Tuscarora Indian tribe was thought to be the most powerful and developed tribe in the North Carolina at the time. It is believed that they were descendants of the Iroquois Nation from the New York area that moved to the Piedmont of North Carolina. They spoke a type of the Iroquois language. The name Tuscarora means shirt-wearing people. Most Native Americans of the area wore no shirts. The Tuscarora used Indian hemp or milkweed to make shirts and other types of clothing. The Tuscarora Indians lived in round lodges made from long poles covered with bark. Each house could hold an entire clan, which could be up to as many as 60 family members. They settled mostly along the Roanoke, Noose, and Pimlico River banks. They used the rivers as a food source and transportation. As white settlement continued, colonists hunted on and tried to settle on tribal lands. This infuriated the Tuscarora and caused many battles. In the end, the Tuscarora Indians were defeated by white colonists during the Tuscarora War. Most survivors moved north where they were welcomed by the Iroquois tribe and became the Sixth Iroquois Nation. The Waxhaw Indian tribe inhabited the Cane Creek area of the Catawba River Valley. They were a small tribe that lived in the little settlements near the river and small streams. This area was very important to their way of life because the river provided them with food, water, and transportation using canoes. The Waxhaw Indians spoke the Siouan language. They lived in longhouses which were built of long poles and covered with bark. These longhouses were sometimes very large. The Waxhaw Indians were known for their large stature. They were bigger and taller than other tribes of the area. The Waxhaw Indians were called flatheads by colonists. They earned this nickname because they would strap their children's heads to a board at a very young age. By doing this, they flattened their Waxhaw, their children's foreheads and caused their eyes to grow further apart. The Waxhaw Indians believed that this was an advantage during hunting because it would allow you to see animals at a greater distance. The Waxhaw Indians had many disagreements with the white settlers that led to many fights. The tribe fell apart in 1716 after the Yamasi War. Surviving members ended up joining the other larger tribes. The Catawba Indian tribe also lived in the Catawba River Valley. They were a much larger tribe than the Waxhaw tribe. Since they lived in the River Valley, they were also known as Iswa, which means people of the river. They were one of the most powerful tribes of the Carolinas. Like the Waxhaw Indians, they also spoke the Siouan language. Men were hunters as well as farmers for the tribe. They were excellent farmers and grew many crops, including maize, which is corn, beans, squash, and gourds. A gourd is a fruit related to a pumpkin. Women were known for their baskets and beautiful pottery. The Catawba Indians made friendly partnerships with European colonists. They would often help the colonists fight off other Indian tribes when they attacked. The Catawba warrior was known to be fearsome in battle. They often painted their faces before they were going to war. Each warrior painted a black circle around one eye, a white circle around the other eye, and the rest of the face was painted black. Despite their friendships with the colonists, their tribe was almost destroyed by an invisible enemy. In 1759 alone, half of the tribe was killed by diseases they caught after interacting with the white colonists. The first European settlers arrived in the New World during the 1500s. They found more than 100,000 Native Americans living in the area that is today known as North Carolina. 
they quickly realized that these Native American settlements were thriving places of hunting, farming, trade, and culture. Why settlement was very destructive to the Native American way of life. By 1800, less than 20,000 Indians were left in North Carolina. European settlers brought many new diseases with them when they arrived in the New World. Smallpox, measles, chickenpox, and influenza were new to Native American tribes. They had no immunity to these diseases. This eventually caused devastating effects on their population in the area. Sadly, these diseases and white settlement forcing them from their lands resulted in many of their tribes dying off into extinction.